Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. As we check out temperatures here just before 6 o'clock this Friday morning, we've got some cooler air trying to work in from the north 40s across northern Minnesota right now, 50s and 60s overspreading the Great Lakes into the central plains and parts of the eastern Corn Belt. But as you head off to the south, we've still got plenty of warm and humid air just to the south of a surface boundary. You can kind of make it out here as we look at the surface winds across the region. Again, coming in from the northeast, north of that boundary across the eastern Corn Belt, coming in from the southwest across parts of the southeast. So again, that, that boundary between the warmer and humid air, the cooler air trying to come in from the north, that continues to be the focal point for our most widespread shower and thunderstorm activity as we head into the weekend. Over the last 72 hours, it's really been across this corridor from Kansas and Oklahoma eastward into the Ohio River Valley that's seen the most widespread significant precipitation, but scattered thunderstorms at times have erupted across parts of the High Plains all the way back into parts of Wyoming and Montana. Now, as we look at the satellite and lightning overlay, again, most of our widespread shower and storm activity stretching from the Red River into the Ohio River Valley with isolated showers and storms possible across the northern High Plains. That's really going to be the theme as we head through the next 24 to 48 hours. We'll continue to watch this corridor for the most widespread shower and thunderstorm activity, but then watch that boundary off to the north for a couple of strong storms as well as we head to the late afternoon and evening hours. So let's put the high resolution NAM model into motion as we head into the weekend. I apologize, this is the actual radar picture over the last several hours. Let's hit play on that and watch what we've got going on early this morning and then we'll jump over to the forecast models here and look at where we are headed uh, as we head through the rest of the day today let's head into the mid-afternoon as we get to around the lunch hour most of the widespread shower and storm activity going to be closer to the surface low which is going to be found here across the ozarks but as we head into the afternoon and evening hours watch for that widespread shower and storm, uh, storm activity to expand off to the east most numerous across parts of the Mid-South, Kentucky and Tennessee, back toward the Boot Heel of Missouri. Generally along and south of the Ohio River Valley is where you're going to find the most widespread rain and thunderstorm activity. Uh, and then you head back toward the north, watch for a broken line of thunderstorms to erupt from parts of northwest Minnesota into North Dakota late this afternoon and evening, and that will push off to the south and east during the overnight. So as we head into the overnight tonight, here's about midnight, heading into sunrise on Saturday morning. Our area of low pressure down here has not moved much. This is going to be the area that we'll be watching for most of the widespread shower and storm activity on Saturday morning. The surface low will start to lift off to the northeast during the afternoon and evening hours. As we get into Saturday afternoon, watch for, again, widely scattered showers and storms across parts of the eastern Corn Belt back into the mid-south and then a second area of widely scattered showers and storms across parts of the Great Lakes into the Midwest here, parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa, back toward the Kansas City area, uh, very light in nature in that area. Let's take this into the rest of this model run here. Sunday morning now, getting into midday on Sunday. This will end here Sunday at 1 p.m. The main area of low pressure lifting off to the northeast, most of the widespread shower and storm activity gone off to the northeast at this point. On the back side, though, we'll see several little waves that are going to keep cloudiness and at least isolated showers in the picture here Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday across parts of the eastern Corn Belt. So as we look at total precipitation between now and midday Sunday, again, here's our corridor uh, as we talk about the, the most widespread shower and storm activity accompanying that area of low pressure lifting off to the north and to the east with just isolated shower and storm activity possible back to the north and to the west. So uh, as we look at the hazards back from the National Weather Service, much of our heat advisories, heat related content off to the uh, the coasts here. And then we've got a, a corridor of green here, flood watches in effect across parts of the Ozarks into the Ohio River Valley. As we talk about severe weather, again, a very low risk with this one, uh, a marginal risk across parts of the south today and then back off to the northwest across Montana. As we head into Sunday here, uh, a marginal risk accompanying this wave as it lifts off to the northeast across parts of Indiana and Ohio, back across Kentucky and Tennessee. And then as we get into Monday, oh, again, a very, or I'm sorry, this is Friday and then Saturday and then Sunday down here in the bottom. Again, a very low risk for severe storms with this. Again, maybe a couple of storms producing some damp downburst winds where you see the marginal risk there or some large hail, uh, but really not talking about a robust severe weather threat as we head through the next couple of days. And as we look at the next five days, 500 millibar height anomalies averaged out. This is the pattern that's going to take us through the weekend into early next week. And this is why, again, we see much of the heat forced back toward the West Coast. And then we see the cooler air coming in here across parts of the Midwest, across the Corn Belt, and really cooling down the central U.S. as a whole for the first time uh, in several weeks going all the way back to mid-June. We really haven't had this kind of uh, widespread cool down across the midsection of the country. 
Now, as we look at 500 millibar heights uh, and vorticity, we can track our players here. Here's the first wave right now that's going to be slowly meandering off to the north and to the east. We've got another wave here that's going to be coming in across uh, parts of the Midwest as we get into Sunday and Monday. And then we'll see a second wave appearing here, or a third one appearing as we get into the mid to late part of next week. So as we just head through the weekend, again, it's this slow wave meandering and then finally lifting off to the northeast that keeps the eastern half of the Corn Belt under, uh, you know, cloud cover, the opportunity for rain and some cooler temperatures as we head into, we're into Monday now, getting into Tuesday. And again, you can kind of see the flow of the atmosphere. We've got our area of high pressure to the west, We've got our, our upper level trough here across the, the north and the east. And so flow coming around the two of those, let's flip it over and do this in black here, uh, kind of being pinched across the central U.S. So we get these little uh, clipper-like systems coming in here Monday into Tuesday. But then as we get into midweek now, Monday, uh, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, getting into Thursday now, check out this wave across the Canadian prairie. Now this is going to make its way into the Corn Belt here across the central U.S. as we get into Thursday and Friday in some fashion or another. Right now, our, our models here really losing reliability as we get into the days four, five, six time frame beyond day four, uh, and that really makes it difficult for us to kind of pin down specifics once we get to that range. So we're going to focus on what we know, and that is this first wave here bringing quite a bit of precipitation at times to parts of the Ozarks into the Ohio River Valley as we head into the deep part of the weekend. Look at this very deep moisture across the region uh, just spinning away as we head into Saturday now. Here comes the, the big push of cooler and dry air now from the north as we get into the back half of the weekend, keeping again cloud cover and the opportunity for light showers primarily in this region as we head through Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then the big push of cooler and drier air, it really is gonna peak here across the Eastern Corn Belt and the Great Lakes as we get into uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and early Thursday. By the time we get to the mid to late part of next week, you're starting to see it here, moisture returning from the Gulf of Mexico uh, as this wave comes from the Canadian prairie down into the central U.S. will once again lift a warm front back across the region, and this is going to, uh, again, set the stage for a northwest flow, uh, a very hot and muggy, or not hot so much as, as muggy and moisture-laden air mass here to interact with this next wave in whatever form it takes as we get into the next part of the week, and that's gonna reignite uh, the chance for more widespread rainfall activity and thunderstorm activity uh, across this corridor. So that's what we have to look forward to. Let's take a look once again at the next several days. Again, watching two players here, our main low that we have kind of slowly making its way across this region here. And then we've got this next little wave, this kind of frontal boundary sinking in from the north as we head into the weekend. So we'll see these two kind of interacting and then lifting off to the northeast as we head into the end of the weekend and early next week. Let's take the drawings off uh, and take this into Saturday morning now, getting into Saturday afternoon and evening. This would be Saturday night, taking it into Sunday. Now much of the heavy rainfall is over with at this point. Now we're just gonna keep clouds, cool temperatures and the opportunity for light showers in this region as we head through Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday drying out as we head into Wednesday, but then we've got our next wave now coming in from the Canadian Prairie across the Northern Plains. This is again gonna bring the chance for showers and storms, much more organized uh, and the potential for some severe weather back to this corridor as we head into the late part of next week. So let's break down the next 10 days in five day segments over the next five days with the best corridor or the most likely corridor for that heavy precipitation from the Ozarks into the Eastern Corn Belt. But then as we get to August 5th through 9th, again, specifics unclear, we don't want to lock this in yet, but this looks like the next best opportunity to bring some rainfall to parts of Iowa and surrounding areas that badly need it with a more typical northwest flow ridge riding thunderstorm setup. But between now and the next five days, the European model precip uh, precipitation, uh, the probability of picking up an inch or more of precip, again, where you see the red shading, that's where we've got the higher 80 to 90 percent probabilities. And that's going to be again from the Ozarks into the Ohio River Valley and parts of the Mid-South. As we talk about this corridor, we'll have to wait until the mid to late part of next week. And again, as we look at the last 30 days percent of normal precipitation here, that big red corridor is starting to really stand out each and every week uh, across parts of the state of Iowa and surrounding areas. Now, as we talk about the Eastern Corn Belt and the Great Lakes, we'll hope to get some, uh, some of the uh, damage mitigated here with some of the rainfall here over the next 72 to 96 hours. Temperatures over the next five days, again, going to be cool across the midsection of the country, 70s and 80s for just about everyone as we head through the weekend with the coolest temperatures, the the, the peak of the cool weather here, uh, kind of climaxing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with temperatures in the mid-70s across much of the Great Lakes, the Eastern Corn Belt, even in two parts of the Central Plains. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk to you again here on Monday morning.